Um, social distance is not happening in the hospitals. Mary Fogarty, nurses representative, says that there is no social distancing happening in the hospitals. On Monday, the 13th of the 7th, 56 patients on trolleys in one area in the Regional Hospital with a capacity of 20. Uh, capacity of 20 patients. This has increased now to 40 patients. Some patients are sitting on chairs. No social distance and staff are exposed. IMO, uh, the INMO have asked for an internal investigation to, into put controls for nurses to reduce the risk of, of spreading infection. Um, when you look at the hospitals across the whole country, um, we see some hospitals are struggling with, this, with the pandemic, and we see some hospitals are not. Maybe it's time we started looking at the management system in some of our hospitals that they are not being managed properly. Um, we have our frontline staff deserve to be protected, but also our patients need to be protected. But why have we got in certain situations that we have some hospitals are, are running well and some are not? So we need to look from a structural point of view how we can help to assist in this and why, why is it that certain hospitals are coming under that regime uh, and being stopped. An additional 96 beds were, were allocated. However, staffing at the hospital has depleted by 20 per cent. Again, is this not something we should be looking from a management point of view? Um, so my question to you is, on a case-by-case -case basis, um, and I asked this at our last um, COVID meeting to do with um, the meat factories. It's down to certain areas there's management problems, and if you haven't got good management, you haven't got good structure. Every place, every person that goes into the hospital goes in to help. But if there's not a right structure in place, they can't, they can't be helped. And, uh, I, I, I share your frustrations about uh, the crowding of emergency departments uh, because the, the, it has been in my experience for many years of my career. Uh, things are um, challenging around the country and that's because essentially unscheduled care is just that. Patients uh, arrive uh, when they feel uh, that their problem uh, requires urgent uh, assessment. So for that reason, uh, departments that can't move patients onto the wards for those who require admission are going to become crowded very, very quickly indeed. And that is reflective of the capacity issue. I have to say, in defence of my management colleagues, they have undertaken a Herculean task uh, in the context of COVID. Uh, they have um, uh, reassigned resources. They have helped in uh, the reallocation of, of spaces uh, for clinical use. They've helped in the reallocation of staff to, uh, to work in various areas. Um, yes, of course, uh, there, there are always areas that can potentially be improved upon, but really our colleagues in management are as clear as I am on this. They don't have the capacity they need to provide the care that they want to provide. And that, 56 patients on trolleys should never happen, um, and it, they, it happens because patients aren't moving through the system quickly enough because there isn't the bed immediately available for them. My second question is, why is there such a high turnover of nurses in certain hospitals compared to others, that in certain hospitals around the country there's a massive turnover in nurses that are not staying within the hospital system. Um, is that not just a clear indication with some of the hospitals that there's a breakdown of uh, management or communications to, make, to let the nurses do their job properly? They are also frustrated that they can't carry out their duty of care. Um, so we should actually look at, from that point of view, how we can help as well. If there is clusters of areas where there is a high turnover of nurses going through certain hospitals, we should actually look at that to see what, why, is there, why is there that? Is it because the nurses are frustrated that they can't take out their duty of care? Again, Deputy O'Donoghue, absolutely. I, I would acknowledge that there is and remains huge frustration in the system when people feel that the level of care that they would wish to offer they cannot do because of the constraints of the system. The whole system needs to work towards facilitating the doctor, nurse, 
healthcare professionals in delivering the care that they wish to do. We haven't been in that space, but what COVID did show us is that when the system pulls together, it can achieve amazing things uh, with regard to the delivery of, of safer care. 8,000 healthcare professionals in Ireland contracted COVID in the, in the course of the delivery of, of the care uh, to patients, uh, which you know, is, is a very significant number of, of people who became unwell as a result of, of the work that they do. We have too many um, multi-bed wards in the Irish hospital system still. We need to be moving towards more isolation facilities. We, we have too few critical care beds. We need more of those as well. So as I say, I, I share your frustration and, and that of the nursing staff staff, but we need a system that facilitates us in delivering care.